Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's too hot to do a fucking podcast today, but I'm doing it, man. Episode, I mean, welcome to episode 98, 90, what are we up to? Fucking, who cares? Honestly, who cares? it's too hot to give a fuck about anything. I don't know why you, I don't, well, if you're in Australia anyway, dude, I hate the heat. I, I'm going to Google what, what episode we're up to. Every every time I do this, I'm like, ah, oh, you could have done this before you started the podcast. And every time I'm like, yeah, but episode 99 of the Speared Sundays podcast. Um, and it is too fucking hot to record anything. Man, I, I hate the heat. I have yet to find a single reason to enjoy the heat. There's no reason. Why would you enjoy this shit? Okay. Oh, you can go to the beach. Cool. An hour. Right? Two hours, maybe. Three hours, you'll go home with melanoma. All right? That's an hour. An hour at the fucking beach does not justify 30 degree heat for three months. The cost to benefit ratio is fucking way off. Oh, I can use my pool that I have at my house. Cool. And what, for the other nine months of the year, you got to pay some fucking Mexican dude to clean it? No. Alright? Go to your fucking public pool and, and swim in the pits. That, it, that all those primary school kids left there on excursion. Haha, <laughs> pissed in the pool. Oi, when you piss, it goes green. And then one fucking genius tries it, doesn't go green. Urban myth. I was the genius. Ha 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 ha. There is nothing good about 30 degree heat. Like, okay, I'll rephrase that. There's a couple of good things about living in 30 degree heat. One, ice cream tastes better for some reason. Two, if you enjoy the beach, you can go hang out in the fucking dirt for an hour. Three, Every fuckhead with a pool thinks they have more friends than they actually do because people come over. And then when winter rolls around, they're sitting at home going, Oh, gee, I wonder where Tomo and Sarah are. They used to come over all the time. Yeah, Tomo and Sarah are using your fucking pool, dickhead. I had three friends with a pool. Oh, sorry. I I didn't have three friends. I had three people that I knew would let me come over to their house so I could swim in their pool. And they thought I was their friend. And I thought they were just a fucking pool. (laughs) That's the difference. But all of those things is not worth the fucking trade-off. 30 degree heat. I don't know why people complain when it's cold. Or people complain when it's raining. Put on a jacket. Problem fucking solved when it's cold you can put on so many clothes that you can be too hot no i'm too hot i gotta take off one of my scarves but when it's hot you cannot take off so many clothes that you're like oh now i'm too chilly you just fucked you're sitting there in the nude sweating and dying i'm wearing a t-shirt and and thin pajama pants with no underwear and i feel like my dick's gonna melt off not worth it not worth going to the beach for an hour it's fucked i don't understand why people like oh yay summer's here now i can go do summer things like what watch your grandmother die of heat stroke fucking get sunburn When it's cold, man. And also, when it's hot, everyone looks like a fucking idiot. Actually, no. Women look awesome. Most women. Fit women look great. Men look stupid. I've never seen... Dude, when... (laughs) Have you ever seen a dude when it's like 30 degree weather walking around? Have you ever thought, fuck, he's well dressed? No. Every guy, when it's over 30, looks like a piece of shit. Because that's how we feel. Walking around in fucking singlets and thongs and shorts. Tan lines and sunburn. Sunglasses that they bought from a service station for 20 bucks because they never saw the value in buying sunglasses that don't break after two weeks. 
oh, why would I spend $200 on sunglasses once when I could spend $300 on sunglasses over the course of three years? And they all look like shit. Buy some Ray-Bans, you piece of shit. Oh, this podcast has gotten off to a shitty start because I'm so mad. It's too, it's too, you know how hot it is, man? It's so, it's too hot to yell, but it's so hot that the only way I can cope with it is by yelling. And then every time I yell, my body just goes, what are you doing, man? You're expending too much energy. So from now on, every time I want to yell, I'm going to angrily whisper. I fucking hate Fucking sun, man. Fuck the sun. Fuck the sun. Dude, this is the thing, right? I don't, this is why winter shits on summer. It shits on summer every fucking year. Right? If you're too cold, oh, put on a jacket. One, now you're not cold anymore. Two, you're looking styling. Dude, do you know how many fucking... I, I ignore summer. In terms of clothing, summer doesn't exist. I will, you'll never catch me in shorts, man. Never. You see, if you see me out in the street, even if it's 40 degrees, I'll be wearing fucking jeans every time. I'll look at the weather app and it'll be like, it's 100 degrees. Cars are melting and turning into molten steel and it's running down the road. And if you step outside, you're going to burn to a crisp. I'll be like, oh, looks like it's fucking jeans again today. I'm not wearing shorts. Have you seen me in shorts? Dude, I don't even wear shorts around the house when I'm by myself. I'm by myself right now. I have a pair of shorts here on the floor. You hear that? Shorts. I could put these on right now. I'd be way more comfortable, but I'm not going to. Because I know how I look. I know how I look in shorts. Fucked. And even though I'm here by myself, I'm rocking long sleeve pajama pants over shorts every fucking day of the week because I look like I have stilts on. But they're just my regular legs. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying about this winter shit. So many cunts walk around wearing shorts in the winter and it's fine. Oh, my legs don't get cold. Really? Your legs don't get cold? You're one of those guys and you're proud of it? What's up with those cunts? Those fucking walk around in shorts when it's cold dogs. Oh, my legs don't get cold. Cool, man. You proud of that? Is that an achievement? Did you earn that? Did you work hard at that? Oh, you didn't? Oh, you do kind of get cold? You just ignore it? So you can wear your shorts and then tell everyone how you wear shorts in the winter because everyone goes, why are you wearing shorts? And then you go, oh, I don't get cold. Good on you, man. That's really fucking cool. <laughs> I want to be your mate. Dude, I wish I, had a, I wish I was friends with a guy whose legs didn't get cold. And he wore shorts everywhere. That's sick. Hey, man. Do you want to go to a nightclub? No, I can't. I'm wearing shorts. Oh, that's convenient. Hey, man. You dress for the beach. Do you want to go? No, it's too cold. It's fucking winter. Well, then take off the shorts and put on some jeans, you animal. Oh, man. This is the, this is the only reason I want to be rich, man. I want to be fucking so rich that... That I that win that summer doesn't even come into my fucking life. It's never summer in my life. This is my my ideal existence. I have millions of dollars in the bank, right? And uh, I have property all over the world. And I've got a private jet. And every thirty days, I fly chasing winter. You know, like those storm chaser cunts, those fucking retards that follow tornadoes and go, oh, wow, look, this storm's pretty powerful. Those fucking morons. I, I, I want to be like that, but with the winter. And I'll carry within my private jet a wardrobe full of fucking styling shit. Hoodies, jackets, jeans, boots. Gloves, scarves, beanies, fucking the lot. 
And I will walk everywhere rocking that shit. And I'll be the and everyone will be like, man, look at Lewis. He's so fashionable, dude. How does he manage to wear cool shit every day? I'll tell you how, because I'm not sweating my fucking testicles off because I decided to wear a leather jacket instead of a Bing Tang singlet. That's why. Because I have the ability to do that. Because I can fly around in my private jet. Chasing the Himalaya win- Himalayan winters. Fuck the sun. That's what I'm, co- that's what I'm coming... That's what this podcast is, is, is called, ladies and gentlemen. Fuck the sun. I'm putting it in the title. It'll get demonetized on YouTube. I don't care. Fuck the sun. Fuck ads. I don't need to make money. I just want to not wear shorts. <laughs> Oh, also, um, the, the live podcast is on sale. Um, Brisbane, pay attention. I am going to read the secret link that will only be able to be found after I say it and in the podcast group. I won't be posting it anywhere else. Do you have your phone ready? Are you ready to type it in and grab tickets? Last time I read out the URL, tickets sold out within like four hours of the podcast releasing. So I'm giving you four warning. If you're listening to this on Sunday, I'm about to read the URL. All right, you ready? You got your phone? Here it comes. The URL to get tickets to the live episode 100 Spearhead Sundays in Brisbane is lewspears.com slash live. You have to type that in. You won't be able to find it on my website or anywhere else. It is a secret link. You have to type it in, fuckhead. <laughs> LouSpears.com slash live. Tickets are now on sale. There are only 100 of them. So be very, very quick because this is going to sell out very fast. It's in Brisbane. Uh, I'm organizing special guests we're going to attempt to have it filmed. I can pr- I'm hopefully going to get it filmed. Uh, it'll definitely at least be audio recorded. And I'm going to maybe try live streaming it again. We'll see. Um, but it's going to be a fucking loose night. I've got some special guests lined up. And it'll be fun. That is lewspears.com slash live. There are only 100 tickets. And it's going to be loose if you would like to get a taste of what it's like go and watch the live episode uh 50 because i don't know it gets fucked but imagine that but with twice the amount of people and it's in brisbane quite possibly the loosest no definitely the loosest city i've ever performed in in my life they're a pack of fucking animals and i can't wait to do it it's going to be um ah fuck it's gonna be where's my calendar on the 3rd of February, 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 no one can say that month, February, it's going to be on the 3rd of February, uh, on, that's a Saturday night, so I can release the podcast on Sunday, um, which is one, oh no, you got two weeks, two weeks to get your tickets, probably more like a couple of days, because it always sells out quick, all right, I'll see you there, so I think we're going to have to have a 99 and a 99.5, but you know, whatever the fuck, that's when it's happening. It's um, all of the information in the venue shit is on the link. LouisSpears.com slash live. I will see you there, you fucking dogs. Oh, man. Well, what else, what else uh, has been happening? Oh, I, some of my uh, videos of my stand-up have been fucking blowing up on Facebook. I put up my Heckler video a while ago, and it just hit 2 million views. That's insane, man. On some of my stand-up, that's one of the biggest videos I've ever done, that means. Two million views. That's so fucking cool. And, you know, 99% of those people have no idea who I am. It's fucking cool. So, yeah, that's, that's really awesome. Two million views. You know what's funny to me? This happens every time a video of mine gets over, like... I'd say over about half a million views. When it gets more than half a million views, it is shown to people that are like so outside 
the kind of audience that you would ever attract. You know, like if it, if it, if my video hits a hundred thousand views, you know, I'm about I've got about two hundred thousand people who like my shit online. So if it gets a hundred thousand views, most of those people like my shit or know of me, right? But once you hit 200,000, that's when it's like most, half of them are like my fans and then the other half are new people who Facebook thinks might like the video and then they might like my page and then you get some more people. But when you get into like the three, four, five hundred thousand and over, that's when it, it starts getting shown to people who will never fucking like you. In fact, when it hits a million, there's going to be... Dude, it has 2 million views. I can guarantee you at least... What's 1% of 2 million? Is that 20,000? Fucking idiot. I'm going to have to get the calculator. 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 times 1, 0, 1 is... Oh, I'm a math genius! Fucking look out, Albert, Albert Einstein. I can't say your name properly, but I can figure out 1% of a million. 20,000. At least 20,000 people fucking hated it. Now, 1%, it'd be 5%. Surely 5% of people who watch a video hate it, at least. Which means, what's that? 5 times 20,000. 100,000 people would have fucking hated that video. And that's when you start getting the comments from people so outside the regular audience that you normally attract. You start getting like mums, uh, like senior people, people who live in fucking Nicaragua who have never seen a white dude say cunt in their life before. He hectic religious people. You know, just all, every kind of person, when there's two million online, it's like every kind of human has seen it. And you get some fucking funny comments, dude, from people who just hated it. So most people obviously liked it, otherwise it wouldn't have gone, you know, that big. But um, I, I wrote down a couple of comments that I thought were fucking hilarious. There was this one woman from uh, America, like a 40-year-old woman, not my core demo at all. Uh, and I think a couple of times in the video, I made a joke about someone being autistic or retarded. I can't really remember. Um, but, but she goes, uh, cause the video is like Australian comedian versus hecklers. It's clickbait as fuck. Um, and someone goes, this guy isn't as good as heckling dealing with hecklers as Jimmy Carr. Jimmy Carr is much better and he never makes fun of the disabled. <laughs> and then fucking 30,000 comments followed that going, yes, Jimmy Carr makes fun of disabled people in every show he does all the time. He definitely does do it and so does just about every comedian other than Jerry Seinfeld, right? And then... So everyone tells her that she's wrong. And then she comes back with, okay, so he does make fun of the disabled, but uh, Jimmy Carr does it with class, unlike this guy. <laughs> Dude, you can't make fun of the disabled with class. He just does it in a suit, you fucking dickhead. You cannot make, there is no classy way to make fun of a disabled person. It's a shit thing to do. Uh, every time. It's kind of shitty. I mean, I'm not saying it's not funny, but it's also, it's not like a saintly behavior, is it? It's not a classy, it's not a gentlemanly like thing to do. Like it's not up there with opening a car door for a lovely lady. No, I've never read that in a chivalry book. When you pick up a lady, always compliment on her, her on her outfit open the door for her, and make sure she knows where you're going. Also, if you see anyone with Down syndrome, yell out the window, Hey, Downey! That's not in any chivalry books. It's not a classy thing to do. He just does it in a fucking suit. And he has an English accent while he does it. And I love Jimmy Carr. I think he's hilarious. But don't try and tell me that he makes fun of disabled people in a fancy way. <laughs> Fucking morons. Oh, man, it's so funny. 
Whenever, well, yeah, whenever a video gets that big, I always like reading the comments of the people who who hated it, because most people love it. But there's always like some fuckhead with fifty likes in the comment section going, "Oh, this sucks," and he's not funny. This guy's not funny at all. Meanwhile, you have like, it's literally a filmed thing of me saying something and then 300 people laughing and applauding. You don't get to say, this guy's not funny. I mean, you can say, oh, I don't think he's funny or he doesn't appeal to my taste, but there's 300 cunts laughing. That's, it's like that when, whenever a comedian gets in trouble for telling a joke and like, oh, that's so offensive. And then they play the clip and there's an entire theater full of people pissing themselves because they know it's a joke. And it's like, dude, he's not tanking, obviously not offensive because the whole fucking theater is laughing. Where's the controversy? Some dumb bitch on Twitter who doesn't like going to comedy shows read the joke in a news article without the comedian's delivery or the or the um, energy of the performance of sitting there in the theater and goes, oh, that's not funny. Of course it's not. That'd be like... That'd be like me going to fucking Gordon Ramsay's best restaurant and then I write down the ingredients that were in the food and I describe how it tastes... And then someone read it and goes, that doesn't taste good. No, because you fucking read it. You didn't actually taste it. You weren't there. No, Gordon Ramsay's a shitty chef. When I read someone else's review of the meal, I can't taste it in my mouth. It's the same shit. Uh, when I read fucking Jim Jeffrey's joke in the Herald Sun, it wasn't funny. Yeah, because he didn't tell it. Some fucking journalist ad-libbed it in an article and then you read it. Skimmed over it in five seconds, fuckhead. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I get some other... You know what? I get some other comments. Because some of my stuff on Facebook especially has been going quite viral recently. The vaccine one blew up again. It was on 2 million views, but now it's on... It's on, like... It's up to, f oh shit, 5.4 million. Okay, so it's gotten like 3.4 million extra views. And whenever that happens, you get like a, an influx of likes of people who liked that one two-minute video. And then they're like, and <laughs> if you don't do exactly that again and again and again, I'm leaving. I expect exactly that video. Oh, uh, what? You, you're a multifaceted entertainer? Yuck! Get that shit out of here. I want that video again. And then if you do that video again, they go, oh, it's not as good as the original. Shut up, cunt. So I got a whole bunch of new people from that. I remember on Christmas Day, this is Christmas Day, I posted a photo of me in a pink hoodie and I said, "In Chris on Christmas, we wear pink and I'm next to the Christmas tree. All right, it's Christmas Day. My day off, I posted a photo saying Merry Christmas with like a 6 out of 10 Mean Girls reference. Alright, it went alright. Most people were like, ah, mm, I understand that reference. I get it. I've seen that movie. It's Christmas Day. I appreciate this post. I'll give it a like or I will ignore it. That Most people did that. But one bitch, she goes, I wrote it down. It made me laugh so much. She commented, Christmas Day, mind you. So boring. Ditching your shitty page. This post sucks. <laughs> On Christmas Day. Who the fuck shit in your chimney, Jane? Wrote her name down. Jane, you fucking whale bitch. Oh, so boring. Merry Christmas. Oh, that sucks. That's not funny at all. Entertain me every day on Christmas Day. Only deliver 11 out of 10 posts every day. Could you imagine if you did that in real life to this chick? You walk up to, J to Jane and you're like, Hey Jane, Merry Christmas. And she goes, Oh, so boring. <laughs> D 
ditching this shitty conversation. She walks away. Fuck, Jane, who's shit in your stocking? <laughs> oh, man, people make me laugh. I've been listening to... Uh, what, I, what have I been doing recently? Oh, I, I uh, appreciate all the feedback on, um, on the Cooking Without Instructions video. I'm really happy with how it came out. I think that series is going to be great. Um, and obviously people really, really liked it. We're very receptive to it. So I'm definitely going to do more. Um, <coughs> and I think basically with that series, I'm just going to chuck it in between bi-monthly ball and Lou review. So two, mi two bi-monthly balls a month, uh, at least one Lou review a month, and then sandwich in between there, a couple cooking videos, um, and then these sketches that I've, that I've, uh, done. So yeah, I, I think that's, I think that series is perfect for me because it's rel it's, it's very low effort for me to produce because I just buy the ingredients, we turn on the cameras and I just start talking. Uh, it's kind of like this podcast, I suppose. It's fairly low effort for me to do, but the, the, I think the, it stands up there uh, with the other two series, which are very, very labor intensive for me to put out. So I think that will allow me, if I can bank up, uh, you know, a month's worth of cooking videos in two days, you do two a day, film them, give them to an editor, and then he gets it back to me. Um, I think that's how it'll go forward. And then that way I, I can effectively spend two weeks on Lure Review and Buy Monthly Bull instead of just one, which I think will work a lot better for me. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so that's, I appreciate all the feedback and um, uh, it'd be great if you could share the series around. I'm going to put it up on Facebook on Monday or Tuesday, like the whole video on Facebook. So like that, share it around, show your friends or just share on the YouTube uh, version because it, it'll, it'll really help. Um, trying to trying to bring back the YouTube channel a little bit and keep uploading weekly there. So I uh, appreciate everybody who liked me trying something new. As you know, er every year I come up with a new, f oh, I'm going to do this now. Every, I don't know. I just can't, I find it hard to just do the same thing for fucking, you know, three years. I can't do one video series. It gets boring. Um, you got to switch things up. <coughs> that being said, still keeping all of the, you know, buy monthly ball in the review will still continue. I just also going to add new shit so I don't fucking bore me or you. Um, man, you know what I'm, I'm, I'm sick of? I'm sick of people uh, talking shit about meaningless rap i've been listening to so much meaningless rap like you know that it's it's the kind of you know how there's like there's kendrick lamar and he says a bunch of shit and eminem and he's like oh well oh, fucking look at that wordplay oh man that resonates within my soul and then on the other side of the spectrum there's little pump going let's get it i i recently i've been on the little pump side of things and you know what? It's great because, you know, I love, I love a bit of wordplay. I love a bit of rap that speaks to my soul and says something important. I love that shit. But every now and then, I want to listen to a 17-year-old kid with dreadlocks and braces say Gucci Gang 56 times in two minutes. And you can't talk shit on me about that. That's fine. Okay? Everyone's like, oh, it doesn't mean anything. No, it doesn't. It just makes you feel good. Good you go, good you go, good you go, good you go. Yeah, I know. It's meaningless and it's fucking droning, but I enjoy listening to it because sometimes you want to put the headphones on and turn your fucking brain off. I don't want... I, I started listening to one of Eminem's new songs and I love Eminem, but fucking hell, can you just... Just let me live my life, man. Stop trying to interfere with my feelings and tell me how I should think about shit. I get enough of that when I turn on the fucking daily show. Hey, here's a couple of jokes. But no, seriously, you should think how I think because, you know, I'm right and you're wrong, you piece of shit. I'm sick of that stuff, man. I walk on water. But I ain't no Jesus. 
And then Eminem comes in with his fucking calculus rap. That's the fucking level that Eminem's at at the moment. And he's undoubtedly the best rapper alive. But he is so good at rap that now the shit he's doing, it's like experimental abstract rap. Like the rhyme schemes that he's forming, I feel like I can only understand if you like an nth level intelligence. Like if you're an otherworldly being living on fucking Mars, you would listen to that and be like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. But I'm just a human. And I listen to Eminem go, it did it, it sales decline. It was it did it did it did it did it. I can't, I just can't listen to it. I feel like I feel like I'm I'm listening to a math test. This shit is so complex that I can't. I just sometimes I just want to turn on some fucking Lil Pump and listen to him go. I got fast cars, bad bitches, and designer clothes. And I have none of those things, but for some reason, it makes me feel good. Makes me feel way better than Eminem telling me why I shouldn't have voted for Trump. It's like, dude, I'm Australian. I had nothing to do with that shit. Can't relate. Sorry, bro. And I can't relate to fucking Lil Pump talking about how he's got so many racks in his pocket that his wallet can't fold. But, you know... At least, at least the beat sounds good on this one, and it's not interrupted by Beyonce going, I walk on water, but I am no Jesus. You know what, Beyonce? Let's get it! <laughs> you know, that's, that's, my, that's what I'm trying to... I don't know. I'm just... I, I'm just a little bit sick of, of fucking shit telling me how to think, man. It's part of the reason why I came up with Bi-Monthly Bull. Is I just, I just wanted to see a political satire series that didn't stop in the middle and go, Alright, now the jokes are over. I have to give you a 15 minute monologue telling you why, you know, this is fucking horrible. It's like, dude, I'm not watching TV to be reminded of problems that uh, don't affect me. (laughs) It's like, sometimes you just want to fucking listen to some entertainment and be a selfish cunt and just enjoy yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm sick of having this feeling of when I'm watching something and then it's like, oh, I'm being guilt tripped. And I'm not saying that that I never watch that shit or I never care about stuff. It's just that it's it's almost like every single bit of new entertainment is coming out telling you how to fucking think about something. I don't know. That yeah, that that's why yeah, I don't know. I'm just I, I I'm just trying to Look, all I'm saying, guys, is Lil Pump for president, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking S, get it. Dude, I saw a guy on the train today. I was going into the radio station to edit and do some filming. And fuck, man, I saw like this 50-year-old dude get on the train. And he had a, he had a, a white mustache. And he was wearing a polo shirt with all of the buttons done up to the neck and it was tucked in and he had a brown belt and cargo pants and a bucket hat and oh it took every fiber of my being to resist standing up on the train and going It was, it was so difficult. Have you ever seen a 50 year old dude in a bucket hat with a tucked in polo shirt? If you have, I hope you threw eggs at the cunt. Or if he was carrying something, you just book dropped him. I've never had the urge to high school bully a man 30 years older than me, but fuck, I got super close. (laughs) Could you imagine though, if you did that shit? I don't know, I feel like every time I see one of those guys like that, I feel like, didn't you learn in high school? I feel like the, 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 whoever, whoever went to school with that guy, they, um, they really didn't 
they didn't act upon their responsibility. I want to meet who I want to meet the best football player in that guy's year level 30 years ago and be like, man, what were you doing? You should have bullied this dude. You should have alienated this guy. Because now he's 50 and he's walking around with a tucked in polo shirt and a bucket hat on the train like there's nothing wrong with it. He's got self-confidence in himself. You fucked up, man. What were you doing? Oh, sorry, dude. I was playing football. I just didn't have time in my schedule to bully Thomas. Like, man. (laughs) It's like... (laughs) It's like the age-old dilemma of if, if you had a time machine, would you go back and kill baby Hitler? No way. If I had a time machine, I'd go back in time and bully that old cunt out of ever leaving the house wearing a bucket hat, even to his... I would bully that dude so bad that he would get to like 60 years old and, and, and put on the bucket hat, look in the mirror, and even though me and him haven't spoken for 20 years and we're, we live in different states and he's looked me up on Facebook to make sure that I would never come into his life again. That's how bad he bullied. I bullied him. He would still look in the mirror and be like, mm, Lewis would bully me if I wore this. And then he would take it off and he would leave. <laughs> I'm not condoning bullying, guys. I'm just saying. Don't wear a fucking bucket hat and tuck in your polo shirt if you're like 55. <laughs> I don't know. There's just always those people that walk around in life being like, where were your bullies, man? You, you should have been bullied out of that shit. It's like I saw the other day a, a, a guy that was like 30 on rollerblades with a helmet and knee pads and sh- and elbow pads. Where was this guy's bullies, man? They fucked up. Rollerblading at 30? Someone needs to fucking grab this guy's sandwich and throw it away and then go, ha ha, hungry boy, hungry boy, and then dack him and push him in the mud. Because who's wearing rollerblades, man? Ha 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 ha. Some people just have too much confidence. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, all right. Shall we get into the worst part of the podcast, guys? I think it's time. Um, I got two questions here, and then the podcast is going to officially end, and then I have uh, a a post-podcast question that's just for me. I'm warning you now. After the first two questions, it's going to be even worse than miscellaneous bit at the end. It's going to be garbage content. So I'm warning you, if you were smart, you would turn off the podcast now so that you don't have to hear miscellaneous bit at the end. But if you really have to listen to miscellaneous bit at the end, don't listen to the bit after miscellaneous bit at the end because that's going to be fucking garbage. All right. Where are we? Two emails here. (coughs) Subject line of this one. Mate walked in on me during sex three times. And then he's written gone sexual. Where are we? Um, Hey, Lewis. Love your stuff. Went to your Brisbane show a year ago. It was great. Blah, blah, blah. I missed last year's, but I hope I'll see you in September this year. Yep, uh, you will. Thank you very much, man. Or maybe I'll see you at the live podcast. Who knows? Um. I've recently been starting, I've recently been listening to your podcast as I needed some idiot waffling on about random crap while I play my new Nintendo Switch, blah, blah, blah. just joking. Oh, fucking hell. Guys, I'm happy with the compliments, but don't make them go on for a paragraph. Um, uh, anyway, here we go. <coughs> I heard uh, you were short on stories and advice needed, so here's mine. Oh, if you want to send an email to the podcast, it's podcast at lewspears.com. Summarize it in the subject line. Some dude sent me like eight paragraphs. I'm not going to leave that shit. If you did send me an incredibly long email, rewrite it shorter because I'm not here to waste everyone's time. This part of the podcast is already bad enough. We don't need cunts fucking checking out when they're only halfway through. Um, and by checking out, I mean jumping in front of a train. Anyway, uh, recently, I was at my ex's 21st. We broke up on good terms uh, on New Year's Eve, which was a few days, which was a few days earlier 
A few days before that, she mentioned she was thinking about having sex with me, um, but I had to leave, etc. I missed the chance. Um, this this fucking dude. Let me let me restructure that sentence for you so it makes sense. My twenty my ex had a twenty first birthday party. The week before the party, she wanted to have sex with me, but I didn't have the chance. Now. This is the party story, all right? So she wanted to fuck you, but you couldn't. So now you're at her 21st. <coughs> so obviously both of you were trying to, you know, do the grown up with each other. Um, where are we? Uh, her 21st was a few days after I missed out having sex with her. So when the party was all done, I was corralling my mates to get out, partially because I was making sure they got home and also because I wanted them out of her place when I wanted to fuck her. Uh, <laughs> by partially, do you mean like it was 0.5 of, of a percent you wanted them home safe and 99.5 you wanted to drill your ex-girlfriend? <laughs> <coughs> Everyone but one mate had left. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the one guy who hadn't been able to get home always goes a bit too hard. This is the worst I had seen him after drinking as he was rolling around on the floor mumbling and shit. I made sure he was close to the couch. I wasn't lifting him up to it. So you put him next to the couch. That's fucking funny. And made sure he had water. It looked like he was falling asleep. So I go and start having some nice casual sex. But then during it, my friend had literally crawled across the floor through the house up to the door and opened it. There was no lock and literally fell in like a stone pillar falling down. Fuck, man. That's some hectic cock blocking. You know, I, I hear of that shit happening all the time when people are drunk where they're like interrupting sex. And I think it's because... They, they just don't want you to have sex with that person. Like, it sounds like this guy wanted to have sex with your ex-girlfriend. Uh, but he knew you were going to do it. So he just wanted to cock block you. But he didn't have, like, the mental capacity to realize that you were, like, three inches inside her before he came in the door. And you're like, bro, fucking get out. I'm not even all the way in. I mean, I'm assuming that your penis is around six inches, sir. If it is three inches, I do apologize. And I will re-edit my story to mean you were balls deep in it, Mr. Micro Penis. <laughs> yeah, I think he's cock-blocking you, man, from already. And we're not even through the email. So the first time, I'd be like, yeah, sweet. That's a little bit fucked up. Maybe he didn't know that I was having sex with her, whatever. Um... I yelled out, what the fuck, dude, but he only responded with mumbling. So I dragged him out of the room, back to the couch. Were you fucking naked? Did you have, did you have your fucking dick on the flop? What was going on? <laughs> uh, I dragged him back to the couch. However, he interrupted again another two times. Every time, the exact same thing, not saying a single word. Yeah, dude, he definitely wants to have sex with your ex-man and he's trying to ruin it for you. But he, but he's not, because he was so drunk, he's just like, I have to stop them from having sex. And so he just did that. For sure, man. He's just fucking, I don't know. What a shit, mate. Um, I eventually stacked a chair against the door so he couldn't come in, but I don't think he tried to interrupt anymore. I know the second time I should have tried blocking the door, but third time's a charm. I'm surprised that this chick is uh, happy to keep going after after even the first time. I mean, that had completely ruined the mood. If your ex, I mean, first of all, it's like you, it's like your ex, so that's kind of weird already. But then his mate keeps bashing down the door, like it's fucking Lord of the Rings, Mines of Moria. They have a troll. <laughs> Um, a few days later, he messaged me about what happened because he found out and he was blackout drunk, etc. I didn't say much because I want to say most of what I want in person. I'm wondering what do I say to make it clear I'm unimpressed and don't really forgive him that much and also say how being that drunk isn't that cool or should I just forget about it and leave it uh, and leave it at what was said on Facebook? which was just me saying apologize to my ex because it was probably way more weird for her. Yeah, it would have been. 
Um, uh, anyway, I left out all the names, so this story isn't too confusing. Love your shit. 2018 is going to be better than your 2017, which is already fucking amazing. By the way, I'm 21 and I don't have a license, so I'm glad I'm not as lazy as you. Bloody hell, 23 and still no license. <laughs> i got some good news for you, man. I turned uh, 24 on the 16th, so... Woo! I'm a fucking piece of shit. It's not even funny anymore. It's just pathetic. Um, yeah, man. Uh, look, I... It, look, it depends how close you are with this guy. If he's like a good friend and you see him regularly, I would definitely say something. Um, not in a mean way, just, hey man, just so you know, that was really not cool. I don't know why you did that. Um, also, you probably shouldn't get that drunk because it was, uh, it's dangerous and it was very frustrating looking after you while I was trying to fuck someone. Giant cock block, man. Try harder next time. Um, so if he's like a good friend, I would do that in like a casual, nice way. But if he's just a guy that you see around every now and then, I would, I would just leave it at what was said on Facebook. I mean, how often are you going to have sex with your ex while he's in the house? Uh, and also, if she really is your ex, and I am right in thinking this guy wants to have sex with her, I mean, if you, if you know him well, he's a shit mate. You shouldn't be friends with him. If you don't know him well, you don't own her pussy. She can kind of fuck whoever she wants. And it'll just be a little bit awkward if you see this guy around every now and then. But other than that, I mean, she's your ex. You don't, you don't own her labia. So, yeah, that's my advice, man. If he's a close friend, I would talk to him uh, about getting that drunk and cock blocking you and say that it's not cool and say you probably shouldn't get that drunk on the regular. Um, if he's... And then maybe gauge if it seems like he's interested in her. If he is... I mean, you can't, you can't exactly say something. He's just a horrible friend for trying to chase after your ex if you are close friends. But if he's just like a casual acquaintance, I would just leave it at that. And uh, I don't know. If he does want to fuck her and she wants to fuck him, then that's, you, I don't know, you just got to deal with it. She's your ex. <coughs> All right, next email. This is, uh, this is an exciting subject line. Man uses Lewis Spears to get laid. <laughs> hey, Lewis, I got a story for you about how my friend and I used you to get him laid after your comedy special. After the comedy special at the meet and greet, I asked you to record a small video for a friend of ours. Um, I attended the show with a friend of mine, Ben, and he bought a ticket for Taylor. But because we bought the ticket back in March, she'd forgotten and double booked a family holiday on the same weekend as the comedy special, so she couldn't make it. Oh, I think I remember this. Um, <clears throat> you recorded a video for us, and I gotta say, I think it worked. It worked. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I've been, I've been yelling too much about the fucking weather. Um, does this guy explain what it is? All right, so... Uh, I'm, I'm going to do a quick recap because I do remember this and he sent me a video clip. I'll play the video clip shortly. I'll edit it in for you guys. So, uh, these two guys came up to me after the show because I meet everybody after all my shows. And I was doing photos and whatever. And one of their mates goes, hey man, we were supposed to come with a girl, but she couldn't make it. Um, also, this guy really likes her, but she doesn't know. Um, and of course... Uh, I took, so, and they were like, can you record uh, a video saying, um, calling her an idiot for not coming? So I was like, all right. I mean, I don't know why you told me that your mate likes her because I'm definitely saying that in the fucking video. So I record the video and this is what it was. Uh, you were supposed to come to this show tonight and you left hanging. Also, he really wants to date you, so you guys should go out together. I'm guessing you haven't told her that, but no. now you can. <laughs> Up, right? So I just took what this guy said and I completely, I just said it in the video. I was like, ah, this will be funny. I'm only recording it once. I only do one take of these things because you're always going to meet fucking 300 people. So if they're not happy with me just revealing their fucking secret about how this guy wants to have sex with a girl, ah, that's too bad. You shouldn't have told me. That amuses me. You're going to have to deal with it, mate. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, revealed the secret and that's what it was. I'll play it for you one more time. Here it is. Uh, you were supposed to come to this show tonight and you left.
Penny. Also, he really wants to date you, so you guys should go out together. I'm guessing you haven't told her that, but no. now you can. Uh, look it up, right? That's what I said. Right. So, now we come into this email. I don't know if they... Uh, dude, you should see the video. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll, you'll be able to see... When I say it, the guy's face just fucking drops. It's the funniest shit ever. I say, also, he really wants to have uh, sex with you. He does, or whatever I said, I can't really remember. Uh, and his, you, his face just fucking drops like, oh no, he said it. <laughs> so fucking funny. Um, but obviously, they, they sounds like you guys manned up and actually showed it to her. Um, where are we? Um... The weekend after the comedy special, we all got maggoted at my place. I managed to get some time with just Taylor and myself where I showed her the pictures we took at the show and then, in quotation marks, accidentally played the video you made for us, revealing to Taylor that Ben was into her. This was actually planned between Ben and myself. She then got all shy and asked how we managed to convince you to make the video for us, but she didn't actually comment on the video itself or what you said about my friend wanting to have sex with her. The next day, we were all working, we were all working together. <coughs> after, night, after work that night, another work friend, Chloe, turned up to the work drunk, complaining of boyfriend drama. We all went to Macca's and had a few drinks like respons respectable members of society, but Chloe wanted to keep going. I went home as I had work the next morning, but Ben, Chloe, and Taylor went back to Ben's place. They fucked multiple times. Who? O all of them. All of them? Or just Chloe and... Or just Taylor and Ben? Or Chloe and Ben? Well, it mustn't be Chloe, because Taylor was the chick who the video I made was about. Uh... I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to assume it wasn't a threesome because otherwise you would have, surely you would have written that. <coughs> they fuck multiple times. But there's another aspect to this. Taylor told me that she's traveling back to France for the first six months of the year. Ben doesn't know about this, but he's finally gotten the girl of his dreams. And she's about to fuck off to the other side of the globe. My question is, okay, so he fucked Taylor. I right, I get it. Well done, man. My question is, any advice I can give to Ben so he's not completely destroyed when he finds out she's going back to live with her family in France? Um, right, so... Oh, there's a little bit more. The story goes one level deeper. Chloe got drunk one night and admitted, admitted to being into Ben, even though she's got a long-term boyfriend. This has really fucked Taylor off, so now she's no longer talking to anyone. Ben is crushed by this. So how can Ben try and get Taylor back and convince her that she doesn't need to feel threatened or jealous of the girl with a boyfriend? Dude, Ben's fucking slaying it. This dude's, get, this dude's getting mad puss. <laughs> this dude's fucking killing it. Um. Oh, actually, I'm not going to put the video in because that reveals his face and they want to be anonymous. I will just play the audio clip. Sorry about that. I've just lied to you all in case you were confused and you watched this and you didn't see his face. Maybe I'll censor his face. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure out something. Um, yeah, so, all right. So, basically, you're just hanging around your mate while he gets heaps of pussy. I think that's your real problem. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. Uh I mean, I, I think it's weird that this Taylor girl hasn't told Ben that she's going away for six months. I think that's kind of strange. Um, yeah, that is, that's quite weird. And uh, this Chloe girl also wants to fuck him, but she has a boyfriend. Uh, I mean, that's her problem, really. Depending on how well you know her boyfriend. That's her problem she's going to have to fucking overcome. If she wants to fuck another dude, she's going to... I wouldn't worry about Chloe... Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I guess Ben's just gonna have to find another girl. I mean, she's going to France for six months. You, you do know what that means, right? When it's a young girl who's single and she's going to another land where her reputation is not following her there and her, whatever reputation she gets in France, if you know what I mean, is not coming back to Australia. Girls do that, man. They turn into a different person they're like oh i can i can fuck as many guys as i want here and that won't follow me back to australia for some reason women's uh number of sexual partners is uh <laughs> is categorized by continent 
not by the actual number. <laughs> it doesn't follow. It doesn't. The number of dudes a girls have sex with doesn't stay with her. It stays in whatever continent she was in. So, you know, a girl uh, in Australia, she might only be at two or three. But when she went on a six month uh, backpacking vacation across South America, I mean, in that continent, her number's up to 33. <laughs> <laughs> but in Australia, she's just a nice, wholesome girl num with 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 three partners. For some reason, that's how that works. So yeah, man, I would. Uh, Ben's just gonna have to find another girl. I, I I think she's going to France for six months. You're not gonna do the long distance thing because you're both young. You're also both not in a relationship. It's not going to work. It never does unless you've been dating for. I, I, me and my girl, or, well, that's not me and my girl, it's just a rule that, that I think works well. No, we do employ this rule. We don't plan ahead for more than half of the time we've been together. Do you get what I mean? Like, me and my girl, we've been together for, like, six years, so, almost six years anyway, so we can plan ahead three years in the future. So we can... So, for example, when we were dating for only, like, three months, the, the furthest we would plan ahead is one month because we don't know if this is going to work out. Do you get what I mean? Like, if you've been dating a girl, this, if this guy sounds like he's only just started to see this girl, I mean, if she goes to France soon and he starts dating her today, when she leaves for France, they will only have been together for a month that's not a solid enough standing in a relationship to plan ahead six months. Do you get what I mean? Like if you were dating a girl for three weeks, you wouldn't book a cruise eight months down the line because you don't know this girl yet. She might have a secret heroin, uh, a heroin addiction. So yeah, man, I would, I would let, uh, if I was your mate, I would just let this chick go and see what happens when she comes back. Because you know she's just going to enjoy some of the French culture. And I'm not just talking about cheese. And that's fine. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying if you've only been dating her for three months, you can't expect her to not, you know, go wine tasting or dick hopping, <laughs> uh, to, to speak more frankly. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Sounds like it. I mean, it just sounds like you really need to work on picking up some girls instead of just standing next to Ben while he fucks all the girls in the room. <laughs> um, all right, that's the end of the podcast, guys. Thank you very much for listening. I will talk to you soon. I will see you in Brisbane in a few weeks for the live episode 100. That's loosespears.com slash live. If you want to grab tickets, they will be up there. Um, and yeah, if you want to support me on Patreon, it helps everything that I do get better. That's the only reason I can afford a guy to film the cooking shit and all that stuff. So thank you very much. If you support me on Patreon, you also get early access to everything that I upload. And I've got a whole bunch of sketches on the way that'll be coming out weekly, but much more frequently if you're a Patreon supporter because you'll get it all early. Same with the podcast. I'm recording this on a Friday, so you will hear it on Friday night. Um, and uh, early access to everything that all of my tickets and all that shit. All right, that's the end of the podcast. Have a shit one. All right, are they gone? All right, I think they're gone. Okay, now it's time. Do you remember, if, if, if you have the patience to uh, stick around after that goodbye, all right, everyone else is gone. It's just me and you. It's just me and you. It's time. I, and y I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you're not going to like it. You're not going to enjoy it. 99.9% .9 of the cunts listening to this this secret this is like the secret track on an album you know when you, you know when you listen to this, like the red hot chili peppers and you thought their album was over 15 minutes later some fucking mexican song starts playing you're like oh what i didn't know this was on the album it's a secret track man it's a secret track this is the secret track of the podcast all right because i got an email oh you're not going to like it I got an email about Warhammer 40,000. I'm going to fucking talk about this science fiction nerdy shit. 
I finally got a cunt asking me questions about nerdy shit. And that's what I'm going to talk about. Turn it off. You don't want to hear this shit. If you don't know about Warhammer 40,000, this will be like, this would be like, this conversation that I'm about to have with this guy who emailed in, it would be like me listening to an in-depth sports analysis of football or some fucking sport that I don't watch by someone who really knows what they're talking about. Everything that's going to be said, if you don't know about Warhammer 40,000, it's going to go straight over your fucking head, all right? Now, let's begin. I hope you're turning off. Okay. Uh, Subject line. Time to find out some real nerd shit. Love it. Um, Hey, Lewis. My name is Caleb, and I've been a fan for ages. Love your content. And then he's actually written blah, blah, normal shit. You always hear. Keep up the good work. Thanks, mate. Now, sadly, my email isn't about how I had a gangbang with my mates, uh, Mrs. and her mum, or how I like getting vomit all over my dick, but rather this is something that I've been wondering about you lately. Now, I kn- I, don't worry, mate. By the content of this email, I know you're not fucking often, all right? I know you're not getting getting your dick wet every day because w- this is like six questions that cunts ask me about Warhammer 40,000. And, mate, you're a legend, but don't... It doesn't surprise me. That's that's all I'm saying. I've never walked in, into a games workshop and be like, fuck, smells like pussy in here. <laughs> somehow, all of those model shops, even though everyone is using glue and paints, somehow the BO and uh, uh, poorly kept personal hygiene has overpowered the smell of glue. And glue is fucking strong. Um... <clears throat> On several occasions, up to very recently, in like episode 96 or something, you've talked about the Horace Heresy series of books and how much you enjoy them. And in several shitty snaps, I've noticed you wearing a double-headed eagle t-shirt. Um, the Emperor's Aquila, for those listening at home. Um, I just heard everyone listening go, the what? <laughs> uh, I feel like it's awesome someone such as yourself seems to enjoy something so so more or less obscure to the general public. Um However, in any of your content, I've never really heard you talk about what you like about Warhammer 40,000. That's because, mate, I know nobody wants to hear about this shit. I'm pretty sure you're the only cunt who gives a fuck. Because I've been talking about this stuff very vaguely for about 18 months. And you were the first cunt who's gone, oh yeah, I like that stuff too. (laughs) So basically, after all this bullshit uh, that I'm asking, is for your general views of the franchise as as a whole. Do you enjoy the whole thing or mainly just the Horus Heresy stuff that occurs way before any of the stuff happening now? Man, I love the whole Warhammer 40,000 universe. The whole thing. Um, I love the setting, the science fiction, the grim darkness of it, how massive it is. I, I love that it feels like such a complete universe with so many different storylines that you can delve into and so many different races of of aliens and humans and space marines and all that kind of shit i love that it's i I at the same time love and hate that it's so big you will never be able to know everything or read everything because it feels like it's the same with like planet like actual reality do you know what i mean like there's so much history and so much shit and cultures that affect each other that you'll never be able to learn about everything um, but it all affects each other and blends in. I love that about Warhammer. I feel like I am, every time I read some of the science fiction, the books or whatever, I feel like I'm studying history, but I can actually step into the mind of the commanders or of the central characters at the time as it's happening. Because I'm such a, I, I, I love reading history but what I like more than history is like understanding the motivations of people. Like imagine if you were reading uh, a history book about Stalin and then in the middle of it, you can actually step inside his fucking brain and hear exactly what he thought. Not what people thought he thought, but what he actually thought. That's why I really like the whole Warhammer 40,000 fiction because you get that shit. And I love the Horus Heresy because it influences the, the 40,000 universe so much. And it's like the build up to it. So I'm trying to read all of the books. And once I get through the Horus Heresy, that's when I'll start reading 40,000 books. Just because I started reading a lot of 40,000 books like Gaunt's Ghosts and all this kind of shit. And there were so many references to the Horus Heresy that I was like, ah, 
I feel like I would understand this and enjoy it so much more if I fully grasp grasped what was happening, you know, 10,000 years ago. So that's why I started reading it. Um, what do you think of the other races, such as the Orcs, Eldar, Chaos Demons, and Tyranids, and so on? Man, I really like I really like the Gene Stealer Cults. Those are my favorite race at the moment. I started reading about them, and I've read a, I read the the book that came out with their codex, and I really really enjoyed it. It was a, such a fucking good read. Um, and I think if I was ever to start painting and modeling and building an army, I would probably start with Gene Stealer Cultists because they seem fun to play and the models are really cool and really new and an interesting hybrid between Imperial Guard and Tyranids. I think it's fucking really, really cool. Um, the o in fact, the only reason I'm not actually building the miniatures and painting them is because I just don't have the space for it or, or exactly the time or the money because it's really expensive and I feel like it's it's something that you need to be living in in a space of your own that's bigger than a bedroom. I mean, look at my fucking bedroom; it's too full of shit. Um, uh, have you ever played or considered collecting any of the miniature figures and actually playing the tabletop version? I actually have a fifteen hundred point army of orcs from a while ago, and like maybe six hundred points of Imperial Guard from when I was a teenager when I used to play. Um, and, and paint them. They're painted very averagely, but I did used to go to game nights, and I've thought about doing it again, and it's something that I, that I do want to do, but um, I just don't really have the time at the moment. Plus, I, really, I need to be able to drive to do it uh, as well. That's another thing that, you know, I don't want to be on the fucking train with my Games Workshop miniature case and, and figuring out public transport and shit because I imagine once you start getting into it you'll start making friends and instead of going to the game nights you'll just go to their house and play on a tabletop at their place and you know you just need a car for that shit so I see it already already frustrating me so that's why I haven't got into it yet I don't have the space and I need a car um, which hopefully I'm going to work on this year <coughs> um, what chapter of the Space Marines do you think are the sickest cunts? I'm a big fan of the Dark Angels myself, and how come you've never really talked about this in detail before? Uh, address that, because no one gives a fuck about it. I can guarantee you, most people who are like, oh, I'll stick around, I'll stick around for the, the secret part of the podcast, 50% of those people have turned it off, because they're like, oh, there's, there's nothing here for me. Um, and chapter of Space Marines, I, I haven't read too much 40,000 lore, so... I, I can only really speak of like um, the Horus Heresy chapters. I really like the Word Bearers and the Emperor's Children. I fucking love like the whole storyline with their um, patriarch is is really really cool and I and I love Lorgar how he's not he doesn't he's not exactly a good a fighter as the other um, patriarchs and all that kind of shit. I really love that whole idea that he doesn't feel like. He should be the commander of an army. He just really wants to speak and spread culture and, and work on a small amount of worlds rather than going out and conquering. He doesn't feel like that. And that's why he kind of fell to chaos because they gave him that purpose. I love that whole idea. Um, and then the Emperor's children, like being so confident and perfectionist and up themselves so much that they fall to Slaanesh. Such a cool storyline. Um, in terms of 40,000... I mean, I, 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 I like the idea of the Black Templars, how they're like fanatic emperor worshipping people because that's so not what the emperor wanted and it's so against everything that he stood for. I like that, but they don't even know that they're kind of betraying what he wanted. I think that's really cool, but I haven't exactly read much at all. I've just read the overview of, oh yeah, that's what they're like. So yeah, I think that's cool. Um, uh, cheers, you heretic cunt, and have a good one, Kate. Fuck, a girl who's into this shit. Um, oh. Well, fucking, it's written Kate, but then you've written Caleb at the top. I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's, 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 yeah. I'm just going to end the podcast now. Thank you very much for indulging me, Caleb. I do, uh, love this shit. Love this nerdy stuff. Uh, check out how many fucking issues of White Dwarf I've read so far. <laughs> I'm serious about this shit. All right, that's the end of the podcast, guys. I'll see you in Brisbane. I, I, I apologize for the last part. <laughs> see ya.